KFC lovers, KFC lovers, calling your KFC lovers. KFC, McDonald's, Hungry Jack. Kentucky Fried Chicken Japan announced that it will raise the prices of some of its products. Since as long as I can remember, fast food companies have hiked their prices as money-hungry CEOs like sharks ride the waves of the stock market. Long gone were the days where you could buy a go bucket for $3.50 and go to the local park with your mates and feast on that crispy popcorn chicken. Now consider the utter shock when I realized KFC is in the signature Zinger box all around Australia removed the three wicker wings opting for two hot and crispy tenders as well as inducing a price increase at the same time. I mean if I want something in my mouth. I want it hard. Anyways, after a geyser of overwhelming rage, I decided to go to the only place where people like to have intellectual discussions, Twitter, to do what Twitter does best, complain about random first world problems. Before I could sit down and write something funny though, my mind blanked. I don't know what happened that day, but my usual witty commentary just didn't come out. The following night, as I cried in my dirty room slurping down half-melted ice cream, I started genuinely laughing at this comedy anime called Kaguya-sama Lover's War. So in order to get funny again, and get a video out on the same time, I decided to analyze to learn what it makes it so funny. Here are some simple rules for this experiment. I'll be categorizing these jokes into three categories. Embedded jokes, these are essentially puns or things that use language itself as a joke. Ongoing, jokes that last multiple seasons. These jokes aren't as prominent in the first season, hence I probably won't be discussing them as often. Bits, these are segments of jokes that last a major portion of the episode, and is anything that isn't mentioned in the last two categories. Moving on, let's introduce some of the characters in the show itself. Chika Fujiwara Honestly, the best way to describe Chika Fujiwara is like a mouse on crack. I mean, she's very energetic and is able to speak five languages, unlike me, who tried to learn his third on Duolingo. Yu Ishigami. Honestly, there isn't a person that I can relate to more. What can I say? He lacks motivation, has delusions of grandeur, has changing sleeping patterns. I mean, the total embodiment of me. Oh. Miyuki Shirogne. If Ishigami was literally me, then Shirogne is anti-me. I mean, look at him. He's good at studying and is in a position of power. The only relatable part is that he's perpetually tired and takes real long to learn a skill. Kage Shinomiya, the master behind, the mastermind behind a lot of the encounters that we face throughout the majority of season one. This is because she's cunning and plans each and every move carefully. Miko Ino, honestly the worst waifu in the show. She's a goody two shoes type of character and really likes discipline. Of course, there's character development, but I really don't like her. Now let's talk about what this series is about. The series is about two lovers, Kage and Shirogne, not being able to propose to one another, which leads them to try to make each other propose. This is a fairly simple concept, but due to the simplicity, it's so fun to watch. The first four episodes do a really good job at establishing the concept of the series. The plot is structured around the main characters with the narrator adding comedic emphasis to the most meaningless tasks. I mean, they even made a scene about a steam bun look more engaging than a fight scene from Dragon Ball Z, so yeah. As a result of this, the series is highly satirical and is a prime example of metafiction in anime as it breaks the fourth wall with its audience. This not only builds their expectation, but subverts them at the very last minute. Similarly, a scene that really stood out to me was this one. I'm well aware that you have a cute little sister. I bet you do it with her all the time, don't you? Oh, that. You see, of course not, you crazy sicko! But are you sure you know what the term first time means? What do you take me for, President? Even ladies like me are knowledgeable about such things. It's your first kiss. Though it might contain some sexual innuendo, it's really important at displaying the real comedy behind the series. On paper, this might not seem comedic. Heck, this is related to something that's generally considered taboo. But it's for this reason, for the show's comedic prowess. Though, I'm not saying to run to your nearest anime pirating website and watch a handful of episodes of Ero Manga Sensei. I realize that true comedy subverts or leads us to a new insight, while breaking our expectations at the same time. Anyways, a character that I genuinely find comedic, like I stated before, is Ishigami. Though at first, he might look like the least person to be the treasurer of the student council, he is genuinely a character that you can root for. Skipping ahead a bit, over the three seasons, you actually see character development, instead of him being just a character with social anxiety as a gimmick. Though this doesn't mean that social anxiety is not a part of his character, but that Aka Akasaka uses his character as a whole and situational irony to fuel comedic timing. Honestly, it's just damn sad 
satisfying seeing him grow and gain confidence. Though if I'm going to talk about this, it's important to talk about how he got into such a situation. It is this conflict where he's doing the right thing for someone, but in turn, he's harming himself mentally. Furthermore, due to this, we the viewer have this realization through the comedy, when someone closes themselves off to others, they're not doing that because they want to, but due to some underlying greater condition. To sum up, true comedy, whether it be satire or dark humour, is a medium to provide us with new insight while subverting the normal. Now that I've finished analysing Kage-sama Love is War, I've finally decided to figure out a funny insult to KFC. Med. If you've enjoyed my videos, please decide to subscribe and hit that like button because I want to buy Xi Jinping's The Governance of China. Bye!